Good afternoon. Today we celebrate the sixth Saturday in Ordinary Time. Presiding at this Mass is Father Mark Rezel with Tim Springer preaching. Our opening song is found in the hymnal at number 715. Seek ye first, number 715. Please stand and join in singing. Always and everywhere, we, the Church, pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, who came to reconcile us to the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, who came to call us, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, who are now seated at the right hand of the Father, intercede for all of us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert, that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the path with sinners, nor abides in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. Blessed are they. Like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters that yields its fruits in due season and whose leaves shall be never fade and all that he does shall prosper. Blessed are they, blessed are Not so are the wicked, not so, for they, like winnowed chaff, shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Blessed are they.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of people from all of Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you. For their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord.
There was an elderly married couple who were celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary, and the husband was extremely hard of hearing. As they sat across the breakfast table from each other, the wife said to the husband, after 60 years of marriage, you are tried and true. The husband replied, what? The wife repeated just a little louder, after 60 years of marriage, you are tried and true. Again, the husband replied, what? The wife repeated a third time, louder even still. After 60 years of marriage, you are tried and true. With that, the husband stood up and shouted, after 60 years of marriage, I'm tired of you too. <laughs> this is Super Bowl weekend and Valentine's weekend also. I know for many it will be difficult to choose which celebration is most important. However, this Monday, Valentine's Day, my wife and Lee will celebrate our 46 years of marriage. Rather, you might say, my wife has endured me for 46 years. I am certain that 46 years ago, when we stood at the foot of the altar and proclaimed our love and commitment to each other, we both never imagined or understood what married life would bring. With many ups and downs of life, we gave and continued to give the support and love we professed for each other 46 years ago. Four children and seven grandchildren are the wonderful gifts of life that God has given to us. And the support and encouragement that we share is God's richest blessings to us. Standing at the altar and taking the vows of the sacrament of matrimony is easy compared to living them each day. Taking the vows is like saying, I know what I think it means, but living them each and every day brings true meaning to what the sacrament of marriage is in reality. Marriage is about growing in love with God and with each other. We come together facing whatever life will offer and together live through the good times and the challenging times. Marriage is a way of life that beckons the man and woman to grow in holiness through their willingness to put the other's wishes and interests before their own. Making God part of your marriage is a significant aspect in keeping the love relationship growing and alive as you journey through life. Christian spouses have the duty and obligation to help the other one get into heaven. Encouraging your spouse to grow in holiness, wisdom, is the means by which we support each other and become saints. However, I'm sure that every married couple know that there are those, know that there are days when we feel that we have already earned a place in heaven. Valentine's Day is a celebration of the heart of God. God wants our hearts to go out to all creation, especially to those who are in most need. In today's gospel, Jesus is speaking for God's heart when he says, Blessed are you who are poor, you who are now hungry, you who are now weeping. Blessed are you who are rejected because you have accepted me. Rejoice, I will take care of you. You will inherit the kingdom and be filled with joy and laughter and have a great reward. But Jesus is also telling those of us who are blessed with much to become the hands and feet of Christ and the world around us. We must not become comfortable in the material world. It is not that God does not want us to be successful, happy, or satisfied. It's just that God wants all of us to be happy, successful, and satisfied, and to be in that same condition. The obligation of those who follow Jesus is that we will be aware of the many blessings that God has bestowed upon us and have compassion and understanding for those who are struggling economically, socially, or spiritually. And until all are full and satisfied, then our hearts should not be full or satisfied. 
The human heart is to mirror the heart of God with a love that goes out to others. The core of the Beatitudes is living the love that is encompassed in the heart of Christ. Jesus does not demand that we abandon the world, but he does invite us to put God first in our lives. It is only in our relationship with God that we come to be blessed and come to bless others as God blesses us. Only God can guarantee true happiness and peace that our hearts always long for. Nothing in the world can give us this peace, but then nothing in the world can take it away. As people of faith, we are called to be beacons of Christ's hope in the world around us. It is in finding ways and means to make a difference in the lives of those whose needs are greater than our own that God's love takes on flesh. We are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, bringing hope to the hopeless, joy to the sorrowful, and love to those who are lone and lonely. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Know that God loves us completely. His love is a love like no other. His is a love that you can depend on. And if God was going to give us a valentine today, it would say, trust me, first, last, and always. Root yourself in me. Give me your heart as I have given you mine. I love you yesterday, today, and forever. With all my love, God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus proclaimed blessings for the poor, the hungry and the sorrowful. We anticipate a favorable response as we present our needs. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the annual Catholic appeal, that as we reflect on our participation through prayer, service, and financial support, we may bring hope to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Mary and the gay couples on this World Marriage Sunday, that they may be open to God's grace through their vocation as a scientist, love, and faithfulness. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, 
hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, who blessed those who hope in you, plant us beside the running waters of your word and fill our hearts with the joy of your unending care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn can be found in your hymnal at number 834. Christ in me arise, number 834.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks the Lord, our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women who you have made for the glory of your name into one family redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all of the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons and your entire people. Grant that all of the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all of the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and the martyrs, with St. John of the Cross and with all of the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
for the coming of our Savior Jesus the Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory of yours now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Our communion song can be found in your hymnal at 814. Rejoice, be glad, number 814.
let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The brief announcement. Next weekend, we will join with parishioners throughout the Archdiocese of Chicago in making a commitment to the annual Catholic Appeal. This year's theme is making all things new, God's promise, and our responsibility. Information is available at the doors of church, in our bulletin, and at annualcatholicappeal.com. Your gift supports the work of the larger church and directly benefits the ministries of St. John of the Cross Parish. Thank you for your generosity. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. As we are sent forth, let us join in singing one final time from our hymnal, number 666, Canticle of the, Canticle of the Turning, number 666.